we hear pretty often that social media and scrolling um, X or scrolling Instagram or TikTok is quote unquote giving people ADHD. Um, are there any data, either clinical or otherwise, that suggests that the mere practice of looking at you know ten thousand different contexts or even you know you know fifteen videos in for a minute while standing at the bus stop is somehow creating um, more a distractibility in other domains of life? Yeah, so I'd say there's a lot of good neuroscience research or neuropsychological data that the more time you spend immersed in social media and it's the constant, it's the barrage of information and, and not just the volume of information, but that you are constantly being interrupted and that most of these interruptions are intentionally designed to attract your attention. And that the more people practice thinking that way or being in the world that way, yes, it's harder to sustain attention for long periods of time, that you are, you train yourself to overreact to any new distraction. So, so the core elements of some of the executive functions that are impaired in ADHD, we are all becoming more ADHD-like. So that that's the thesis of the book that I've been working on that's still several months from going anywhere, but it, I call it Attention Deficit World. And one of the things that's been frustrating is that there's been this huge disconnect. There have been people writing about, you know, the question you're asking, that the neuroscience, our brain's getting more distracted, are, are we becoming, you know, it's not just distracted. You know, immersion in this media world or social media, cell phone, however you want to break it down, it's not all bad. It's not just that concentration's worse. So, you know, detecting visual items in the environment, being a, there's some things that people become more adept at. Whether that's actually a good thing to be more adept at, um, people do uh, multitask more quickly or switch in and out of it. They're still not doing as well on that task if they had no distractions and just focus solely, but they're multitasking better than people who don't immerse themselves a lot in the internet. So there's a whole literature and popular books and attention. We know everyone's getting a little more distracted. And, but all the books that talk about that say, well, this is just sort of everyday stuff. This has nothing to do with ADHD. And there's lots of wonderful ADHD books out there. And they say ADHD is this discrete condition, even if they acknowledge it's on a spectrum of severity, but that it's really serious stuff and we don't, you know, just because you forgot your homework or you left your car keys or you can't remember where you parked your car, everyone does that. And we want to make sure that you respect that ADHD is a serious and potentially disruptive condition. And, and when I say serious, and I'm going to go on this tangent for a little bit, the caricatures of ADHD is, you know, oh, there's the squirrel. You know, it's silly. It's people are distracted, ditzy, late, doing things that we make fun of in society. And we ignore that many of these things can have a more serious repercussions inside to it. So a kid who has ADHD, their life expectancy is about 10 years shorter than their non-ADHD peers. That is the same extent of cutting off life as having diabetes or having major depression. Is that because of um, accidents Addiction, um, injury? Almost all of it is two factors, and they're almost equally. One is accidents, so motor vehicle accidents. You know, if you're driving distracted, you're more likely to be involved in accidents, but it's also, you know, the, the kid who's probably being more daring with the tractor on the farm or daring the bull or, I mean, all sorts of accidents, not just motor vehicle accidents. And the other is suicide. And... Some of the suicide is because there is an overlap with depression and anxiety and other factors, but I'm convinced, and not many people are looking at this angle, some are. With suicide, we focus so much on the despair, the misery that someone hates their life. I mean, but there's lots and lots of depressed people who don't kill themselves. The other really important element to suicide is impulsivity is lots of people feel really bad, but we know having guns in households increases the right of likelihood someone's going to 
shoot them. Accessibility to tools that you can quickly use to kill yourself, which shows if you slow down the thinking process, if you give people more time, if they are less impulsive, they are less likely to kill them. So they still might be miserable. Um, and that's, that's my explanation for why, even though during COVID lockdowns, and we did see increases in depression, we did see increases in PTSD, we did see increases in domestic abuse and battering, and we saw actually a decrease in suicide during that time. Hmm. How does that make any sense? And it wasn't huge, but since suicide's been going up every year prior to that, it's pretty clear and blatant in the data and remarkable. And my claim is so many more people were at home. You know, your kid's not around to play with the gun or find the gun or, you know, you know what's going on or poison or hanging themselves from the door or whatever else they might do. Very interesting. I, I didn't realize that ADHD carried this um, lifespan liability. Um, and 10 years is certainly significant. There's also the middle ground. So I, I sort of mentioned that the caricature is sort of the silliness and the trivial of being late for your friends at the restaurant or forgetting your car keys. And the extreme is death. But in between, we know ADHD measurably derails education, disrupts social relationships, impacts your likelihood of your earning potential. I mean, ADHD isn't just an academic cognitive problem. It isn't just who's going to jump through the hoops and get through school. It isn't just who's turning in their reports or um, doing their work on time in the work. It's also having social implications. And in all of those areas, it's having measurable, detrimental, significant impacts on people's lives.